Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Large ships, such as aircraft carriers, with their enormous crew, can be considered a small floating city, where its population works and sleeps for long periods. Like any population, this vessel generates large amounts of waste that must be treated appropriately to avoid causing health and environmental problems. This process has changed over the years, considering ships simply dumped their waste directly into the ocean for centuries. With the arrival of steel ships and larger naval fleets pre-World War II, waste began to include metals, glass, and non-biodegradable materials. However, even with better technology, the crew at that time still disposed of the waste by throwing it into the sea. Then, the widespread use of plastics and packaging and products introduced non-biodegradable waste, complicating those traditional disposal methods. Nowadays, there has been greater awareness of the ecological and economic impact of these actions. This is why they have been implemented with specialized equipment, which Navy waste management workers use to separate and process literal tons of garbage. Such processes consider that crew members on the carriers produce solid waste, including food packaging, paper, plastics, and other materials. For this, specific practices and facilities are on board to handle the various types of waste produced. Waste management on an aircraft carrier like the USS George H.W. Bush is a crucial and tightly organized operation, given the need to handle the trash generated by nearly 5,000 sailors daily. The Navy takes waste management seriously to ensure that the waste is sorted and disposed of following the Chief of Naval Operations instruction. Each type of waste is sorted and processed properly, including materials like paper, plastic, metal, food waste, burnable items, textiles, glass, and plastic. A crew team plays a critical role in ensuring the waste is processed according to the appropriate procedures. Due to the environmental impact of plastic waste on the oceans, there are strict regulations that forbid the discharge of plastic from Navy surface ships worldwide. The only exceptions are for cases that ensure the safety of the ship, the health of the crew, or to save a life at sea. Trash on board U.S. Navy ships is handled and disposed of in several ways depending on the type of material.
aircraft carriers have a trash room and incinerator room, where a team of about 15 people handle and process all waste generated on board. This includes a wide range of materials, such as hard and soft plastics, food waste, metal, and more. All the organic materials are shredded, pulped, and mixed with water into a biodegradable slurry, safely discharged into the ocean at least three nautical miles from shore. Harder, inorganic materials, like metals and glass, are shredded into smaller pieces and stored in bags for easier handling. According to the regulations, other materials like textiles, wood, and rags are burned in a shipboard incinerator at least 12 nautical miles from shore. If regulations permit, the resultant ash is stored for onshore disposal or discharged into the ocean. For plastic materials, there are sorting practices on the ship essential to maintaining environmental goals and showing waste management responsibility. This waste is generated in various areas of the aircraft carrier, considering that many items used on board, such as food packaging, have plastic components. To simplify the sorting process and improve plastic waste management, sailors are encouraged to remove all plastic components from items before segregating waste. This includes removing plastic liners from containers and separating plastic parts from other materials. Using a compressed melt unit, such material is then cleaned, shredded, and compressed into dense pucks. These pucks are stored until they can be offloaded or transferred to a waste management facility on shore. Waste management is not unique to military vessels. As a procedure involving environmental protection, these protocols must be followed for all types of ships, both military and commercial. In the latter's case, the steps to be carried out are very similar to those followed by naval crews since they are all governed by international regulations, such as MARPOL. According to these guidelines, waste must be classified into nine categories, including operational waste, such as materials generated during ship operations, or hazardous waste, like batteries and chemicals. To aid this classification, ships are equipped with marked bins or containers to store waste by type and posted regulations on board to inform crew members about properly disposing of their waste. Such segregation makes it easier to process, and once the waste is ready and stored, it is prepared for transfer to a barge or port facility. An important case in waste management on commercial vessels can be seen on the large cruise ships that travel worldwide. In this case, Cruise ships must handle diverse types of waste generated by thousands of passengers and crew members daily. 
Like other vessels, the ships follow the MARPOL regulations, where the crew members sort the waste into recyclable, non-recyclable, hazardous, and food waste material. This is done by collecting the waste from designated bins placed in passenger and crew areas. Shredders and balers inside the waste processing room reduce the volume of waste to optimize storage. For food waste management, the vessel has onboard tools to process it, including pulpers that grind the food into a slurry anaerobic digesters that convert organic waste into biogas, or biodigesters, which are stainless steel units that use microorganisms to break down the food within 24 hours, producing gray water that goes into the ship's wastewater systems. The development of new technologies in recent years has allowed the implementation of improvements in waste treatment processes in different types of vessels. This has included scrubber systems responsible for reducing sulfur oxide emissions from exhaust gases, according to international regulations like the IMO 2020 sulfur cap. Those systems primarily work by removing sulfur compounds from exhaust gas using advanced cleaning methods. Depending on the ship's travel route and local discharge regulations, it can switch between those modes. Those systems are integral to sustainable maritime operations, enabling ships to meet environmental regulations while operating efficiently. The complexity of this system requires a detailed installation procedure that must be followed for it to function properly during vessel operations. Initially, during the ship's assembly, the engineers assess the ship's layout and operating requirements, focusing on the engine room and exhaust system configuration. Depending on such conditions, the scrubber system is customized to fit within the available space, considering factors like the type of scrubber and the ship's characteristics. The experts consider the routing of pipes and the control units that must be integrated with the ship's monitoring systems. If the ship has already been built, the modifications will be done in the dry dock, where the ship will be safely positioned for structural modifications and system installation. Here, several operators create openings by cutting into the stern or other sections of the hull to facilitate equipment entry, as seen in some unique projects where the scrubber is installed from the stern. With those entry points, the main equipment is installed in the engine room, often replacing or supplementing existing exhaust infrastructure. The implementation of new methodologies and systems to improve waste treatment has proven the importance of caring for the environment within the operations of military and commercial vessels. Reducing waste and emissions, as well as using these materials for energy generation, motivates us to continue creating new tools. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.